today I will finally explore Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. I have one or two days here only and there's one thing I'm particularly excited of. Also, it will be the first time that I will use the metro system in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, oh, over there I can see already the... Here are the vending machines for the tickets. Here's the information. The queue is quite long. I don't want to go there. Uh, English, I want English. Buy tokens. Maf, Minta Maf. How does this work? Buy tokens, Maxu, ticket or what? Uh, token. Ticket, oh, okay. What's on YouTube, guys? Here I have to type the way I want to go, right? Yeah, yeah. Bukit Bintang, okay. Eh? What's that? I tried to use this one. Actually, how to pay? Is it. Uh, oh, cash, okay, yeah. cash. buy a ticket apparently I buy a token I have no idea what to do with this I think I have to use it on this um, gate okay that was easy so far let's check I should be on this side if I'm not mistaken okay the process was quite confusing of course because I'm using it the first time but actually it was also quite straightforward so it was not like too complicated to understand or something however it was cash payment and I almost didn't have enough cash so I'm wondering if there's any way to pay like with electronic cash e-wallets or something like that because usually I have only that nice a one hour train ride ahead and what's really interesting is for me that this LRT actually doesn't have a driver it's completely automatic in Germany we have like um, I, I don't think we have any automatic subway or train this is how it's look in the back and also in the front nothing just nothing I think we have um, still drivers because mostly of safety reasons for double check and we don't want to have like electronic failure or something like that. This is a new experience for me already. Oh, I also hope that I don't get problems because I bought the cheapest ticket possible and it was like Bukit Bintang SBK and Bukit Bintang uh, MRT or something was the choice I had. And I just took the SBK. I have no idea what it means. I just hope that it doesn't bring me any trouble. I'm just out of the Bukit Bintang station and I had two options to get out. I had to put my token inside this slit or whatever this is and I can swipe a card. So I think there's also a way where I can just um, use the touch and go card or something like, like at the toll station on the toll road. Uh, next time I will definitely do that. It's much more easy. And I want to go over there. This is what I want to try to use. This is the technology we don't use in Germany. The idea of a magnetic hovering railway existed in Germany already in the 1922s. This is crazy. Back then there was no social media and it was much harder for visionaries to get the attention that is needed to get the change done and make their vision come true. So the technology was really developed and tried out and tested in the 1990s. However, in Germany they also had political fights about power and therefore we don't have the technology in use today. Station to MIT Ampang Line 
That is something I was wondering in the MRT because they didn't have any announcement what is the next station and I was wondering like how are the locals doing this here they are counting the the numbers of the stations or what are, how are they doing it I had to use my GPS of Google Maps to see where am I right now so that I can exit on Bukit Bintang how was my experience with the monorail I was really hyped up about the technology side of things but actually after taking a ride on the monorail I'm more impressed by the view of the city because it's elevated the rails are elevated and you have a really nice view of the whole city you can see you pass by so many things Bazaar Ramadan you can see from the top you can see throughout the, the small alleys you pass by unfortunately I couldn't film it because it was really cramped it was a nice experience it was a little bit uh, less noisy than a conventional rail but I like that Malaysia hasn't given up on the system especially on long distance travels I mean inside the city it's not really practical because it's difficult to implement into conventional rail systems but on long distance journeys Malaysia could be ahead of Germany when it comes to technology uh, of course it's not something that has priority because it's a quite costly thing to do and it's more like a luxury than a necessity so I hopped off the monorail in Chowkit because it's quite close to Kampung Baru. The goal is to go from Kampung Baru to the Petronas Twin Towers and then to the KLCC Park. And over there I can see the towers already. This is crazy. Kampung Baru is actually like Kampung. I thought it's just a name or something because we have also names like that in Germany. We have, for example, Volksdorf, where I'm coming from. It literally means Kampung Rakyat, but it's not a village in the end it's just part of the city so I'm really impressed I'm not, not impressed I'm really amazed that this is really like Kampung really like you can see the village houses village type houses and suddenly there is the skyscrapers in the background <laughs> this is crazy oh wow look at this that over there is the Medeka tower it's the second tallest building in the world it doesn't seem that high actually but maybe it's just far away see this is what I mean this is literally the Kampung. Just look around me. This is crazy. It's literally a Kampung. And I'm just walking through this Kampung and being surrounded by skyscrapers over there. I haven't seen much of KL yet, but so far I would choose to live here if I have to live in KL. That's really nice. It's really cozy. There's like, like a yard. You have your small little garden going on. You can drink your morning coffee. This is really great. Really great. This is what Google Maps is saying. And this is how it looks in reality. <laughs> but I already asked someone. They said, I can pass by here. It's not private property or something. <laughs> it looks... Yo, it feels wrong. It feels like I'm in someone else's garden or something. Look around. Crazy. Oh, but not the only one. Uh, other, other people passing by, passing through as well. <laughs> this is crazy. I cannot imagine this is something you don't have in Germany at all. This is a completely new experience. Wild. Let me just walk here on the left side. It's one street. Wow, this is crazy. So many people passing through this section. Okay, let's cross this. Wow, look at this. What a pity. This could be the best view on the Petronas Twin Towers of all of KL. But this building is blocking it. I'm heading now to the Twin Towers as straight as possible because exactly behind them is the KLCC park where I want to end the sightseeing tour and then care about my Buka Puasa where I will do it. Yeah, okay. And I saw on maps that that's the thing. That is the thing. That's the bridge called, I don't know what, Salom, Shalom, Shalom? That's Jewish, no, that's, that's a different thing. Anyway, 
it's it's some bridge and it's lit up hey <laughs> it's lit up at night but it looks interesting the, the structure is really nice i don't know how to get there here's a really nice thai coffee oh they have a tower i can i can walk up this tower on the stairs and then i can cross the highway i noticed since i'm staying in malaysia i become really lazy when it comes to walking for short distances i already take the motorcycle this is crazy but actually it's it's a little bit the fault of the infrastructure i think because everything is just a big road you, you don't really have the chance to walk a lot it's not comfortable to walk 50 meters down the road just take the motor <laughs> Here we go, here we go, look at this, nice. Nice. Feels awesome to walk into this tunnel, look at that. I just noticed that walking in KL is actually easier than in Penang. I found out. I'm surprised how fast I got really close to the Petronas Towers just by walking. It was now 20 minutes. I'm like here in the middle of this cross section and now I just have the mission to pass through the Petronas Towers. I don't know if the entrance is free. I can actually pass through it. Otherwise I have to go around. Let's try. I try to pass through first. And there are quite a lot of people inside of this, behind this wall. But I cannot tell where is the entrance. I cannot see at all. Because there was some entrances just blocked with a metal. I think. Yeah, I think I can enter. Oh, that's just the park. I can go into the Twin Towers over here. So here's the entrance for the cars. I hope I can just go inside and exit on the other side. Let's find out. It's wild for me to see how many people on that cross section over there actually made videos they walk around or like me with this camera on the tripod and the microphone usually i don't see people who do this but suddenly i see a lot but only around this petronas twin towers anywhere else i didn't see anyone of course it's free to enter i forgot because you can go upstairs uh, you can go to the observation level oh look at this really nice and cool in here I never saw a racing car that close I only saw it on TV crazy over there I can exit already awesome I didn't know they have actually something like a mall in here but apparently they have and over there right in front of me should be the exit I'm a little bit I would stay a little bit longer because usually in Penang, when I go around in Penang and do the videos, I start talking to the locals a lot because hey, I'm used to Penang. Hello! <laughs> uh, I'm used to the locals there a lot, so it, it comes really natural for me. But now I just walk through Kampung Baru, for example. I just pass through and not really an opportunity or a reason to talk to the people. Actually, I would like to stay here a little bit longer to go there again just relax a little bit more having the opportunity to talk to people this is crazy this is the view when i exit like i don't know this route i i, I had only the rough plan kampung baru uh, twin towers klcc park but here are so many little things just on the way and it becomes better and better like i don't know i just didn't expect to have this fountains and this little what is the name in English? Tasek. Tasek? Like, like a pond, like a small pond with the fountains. Really nice. I think over there, just in front of me, is the KLCC Park. I just found out. <laughs> I just had a short look on Google Maps and I saw I'm already in the KLCC Park. I thought I have to cross a road or something. Yeah, I'm just directly inside. That's crazy. That's really nice. This is really nice. So there is one route at least in Kuala Lumpur that is really nice to walk and that is from Kampung Baru over the Saloma Bridge, now I know the name, Saloma Bridge, to the Twin Towers, to the KLCC Park. 
really awesome. I don't know if there's any other place or, or any other route you can walk that easy and see so many things in such a good perspective. For example, the Twin Towers, I can see both of the towers. I don't have a weird view from the side where I can see only one. So all the perspectives and all the views on this route is really, really great. What I didn't like was the public bank building blocking the site on the Petronas Twin Towers. I'm really, uh, this is my proposal. I think that Petronas should buy this building, this office building of the public bank and take it down again. So the view is free again on the Twin Towers so that the landmark of Kuala Lumpur is visible again from that perspective. Watching this while fasting. Oh, now it's time to care about my Bukavuasa, so I'm probably going to visit Bazar Ramadan now. This is crazy. I saw that lightning strike and then I pressed, I quickly pressed record to record the sound. This was crazy. It, it struck one of the skyscrapers. I want to find some some roof over my head as fast as possible. I don't know if there's a masjid close by or a metro station. This feels really uncomfortable. Okay. And I brought my Gaia Campo because literally I don't care when anything gets wet on my shoes. Made it to Dato Keramat station. I'm wet. I saw Bazar Ramadan over there. Um, I will shop a few things really fast. Maybe something small to eat only because I think at the masjid they have something to eat. What is this? This one looks like. Uh, what is that drink? Koroi. Koroi. <laughs> Everyone hyping up the camera. Where is the. Where's the way to go? Apani apple? Yeah, no, this I need you. Oh, honey, need you. Oh, yeah. Apani. Uh, jago. Oh, jago. I wanted mango, not jago, and I wanted apple instead of honey, you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Feels like there are mostly drinks left only. Okay, that bazaar Ramadan was not really organized I think. Usually there is one lorong and you can go through and you have the things on the left and right side but now it was like just like all over the place. I didn't have the focus to get through the system and so I just go to the masjid. I have to eat what they have and meet my friend over there. This is actually crazy where I'm walking right now. <laughs> But this one is the official way that Google Maps is suggesting. But now it's getting really close. Look at this. Like, I really have to be careful not to feel like Indiana Jones adventurer or something like that. Okay. So crazy. It's 10 minutes until Bukapuasa, until breaking the fast. I have six minutes left to walk. Uh, I'm completely blur. I cannot think normal. I cannot think straight anymore. I cannot speak normal anymore. I hope that this smell is coming from the masjid because it smells really good. It smells like bread, like freshly baked bread. I hope it's coming from the masjid. I hope this will be my iftar today. <laughs> Here around the corner is the, the food already, many tables. Many people sitting. I hope I, I hope there is still something left for me. Okay, I got this Bubu Lambo and someone gave me this sweet snack here.
dia. Finally, after Maghreb, now we have the big food. Uh, look, look, look. What is this here? Mm. Some dates. <laughs> food vlog. <laughs> That is already sitting over there. And it's quite empty, it's still quite empty. I don't want to speak it too loud. But I think later it will be really full and I want to, I want to film a little bit of the Taraway. Uh, not all because I want to enjoy a little bit of it as well. But maybe the last two rakat before the um, winter I can record a little bit. أشهد أن محمد رسول I'm 
بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مغض علمنا ولا إلا النيران مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وطارنا اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا وانكر لنا ولا تنكر علينا يا رب العالمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل أعداء الدين يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم إنا أسألك بكل اسم ولك سميت به نفسك وأنزلته في كتابك وعلمته أحد من خلقك أو استثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وهمومنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله حجة وشفيعا وذورا وبرهانا يوم لقائك اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اعف عنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا ممن صام وقام إيمانا واحتسابا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر وارحم جميع موتى المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ونفس لا تشبع وقلب لا يخشع وعين لا تدمع اللهم اجعل لنا قلوبا خاشعة يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نعوذ بلقاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم وفق ولاة أمور المسلمين لما تحب وترضى خذ بناصيتهم للبر والتقوى اللهم وفق خادم الحرمين الشريفين بتوفيقك أيده بتأييدك وفقه ونائبه لما فيه خير وصلاح للعباد والبلاد والمسلمين أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الله أكبر. Well, that was Taraway in the Saudi mosque. Really interesting. It was very close to what I know from Germany, how we pray Tarawih in Germany. I hope I can give you a good picture of it, even though I didn't have much time to film it because I had to skip just the Witter and they already started. Now after the Tarawih, we are here at Pilita in the Ampang point and Ustas is somewhere here in the back talking to his friends. And yeah, this is how we round off the day, how we round off the Ramadan day in Kuala Lumpur.